Is it finally happening? Give it a thumbs up, thumbs up, th 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 thumbs up. All right, we have some dope gaming news items for this video. The first one, Metroid. Bro, this has been, since it was first announced, <laughs> my most anticipated game for the Nintendo Switch. And... With the recent news and turn of events, Nintendo has been <gasps> raging me, disappointing me. First, the game got delayed. And I guess I was the only one on the internet upset that the game was delayed. Every other Nintendo dude I knew was like, oh, that's great news. That means we're going to get a great game. No! You should have had Retro working on it in the first place. So... Uh, Metroid has been delayed. Um, they pretty much are starting from scratch. They announced it last year that they're starting from scratch. Retro Studios is working on the game. But new news. This is coming courtesy of Trey 81 That environments, the environments in the development of this game is being outsourced. This could be a good or bad thing. It could be good. They might be ramping up production, have Retro, the core development team, focus on the gameplay, the features, online multiplayer. Are we going to get online multiplayer um, of the game and have another studio work on the trees and the grass, which you're probably not even going to be you're not even going to be staring at. Or it could be Retro. That's the good. That's the good possibility. Or the negative is maybe Retro Studios is understaffed. And they're not able to handle the scope of this game. They're not able to do it all themselves. And they need more developers, more studios to help them. But I always say this, I say this though. This happened before in development where um, different, they outsource um, different parts of the game. So I think it's the, the, the former and not the latter where I think they're just trying to speed up development. But even if they speed up development, I still don't see this game coming out in, in 2020. The game was announced that they're starting from scratch. Was it last year or the year before? I've said this before. I think this might be a launch title for a Switch Pro <laughs> or whatever the next Switch is. Um, I just don't see a trip. If this game does come out this year. I'm going to have serious concerns for a big triple A Metro game to just be in two years of development. Um, I think it's going to be at least three, four years. If they're going to make a big triple A great game optimized for the switch, I think it's going to be a, a four year development cycle. I think we're going to get this game 2022, 2022. I'm just saying 2022 or 2023, the latest. Uh, for Major Prime 4. I hey and I'm not a developer. I'm just a lowly YouTuber. They might announce Metroid coming holiday 2020. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I have a lot of question marks. But we'll have to wait and see. Metroid is in development though. That's the good news. Alright. This also causes us to wonder when are we going to get the next Nintendo Direct. Last Direct was in September. Last big Nintendo Direct. And Nintendo typically has a Direct at the beginning of each year. We need one, bro. Bro. We know Animal Crossing is coming. But what else has does Nintendo have in store other than Animal Crossing? 
it was, I think it was the last direct at the beginning of the year where we got the first um, announcement for Luigi's Mansion 3. So I'm expecting we're going to get another big first party game announced at the early Nintendo Direct um, in January or February. I think the last Direct was at f in February, the beginning of February. So, I think we need something at the beginning of February. Nintendo had a dope, dope, dope um, year last year. But, if they want the momentum to keep going, we need to get some game announcements. So, wondering when we're going to get the next Nintendo Direct. Time will tell. We'll find out real soon, though. All right. Next news item. This is coming courtesy of Forbes.com. And it reads, the leak specs reveal Xbox Series X could be more powerful than the PlayStation 5, while the PlayStation 5 could be cheaper. And so this is still in the rumor phase, but all rumors are pointing to Microsoft's next-gen system being more powerful than the PlayStation 5 and Sony looking to find more of a balance between performance and price because both consoles could be super duper powerful but ain't nobody spending $700 for a console so um, I think what Microsoft is trying to do they might have an expensive console 500 600 the most and also have a cheaper mid-tier console they could have their cheaper console be on more par on par with the PlayStation 5. The latest rumors are saying the Xbox Series X is coming in at 12 um, teraflops and the um, PlayStation 5 at 9 teraflops, which is, a, uh, in my opinion, it seems like a big difference in commute computing power. My um, Xbox One X right now is, isn't it six teraflops? Um, right now so seems like the playstation 5 is, is going to be an in between current gen and what microsoft has to offer uh rather than being sort of more on par with uh, microsoft's console but all of this is still rumor speculation we have to wait and see uh until the official specs are revealed and nintendo's the only company when nintendo launches hardware they never reveal the specs Dudes have to actually um, look into the system and find the specs for themselves. Microsoft and Sony, they reveal, they give us the lowdown, the details. So expect the E3, we're going to know exactly what we're purchasing uh, come next gen. So this holiday is going to be lit with two new consoles um, launching. Can't wait, can't wait. I'm already probably going to get the Xbox Series X day one. Um, and then I'll see what Sony offers. We'll see. All right. This is some pretty interesting news. Untitled Goose Game. Had the developers have tweeted out that the game has passed over 1 million um, units sold. Pretty cool, pretty cool. The game is free right now on Game Pass. I might pick it up. I might, I might just download it just to download it. But um, good, good to see indie games are still getting love in 2019. And... The last news item. I ran across this article and I thought this was interesting. This is coming from CNET.com. And they're saying the rise of cloud gaming could be the death of traditional consoles. Right now, I don't think the technology is there. I do think eventually we might get one more generation of consoles. The PlayStation 6. Xbox, whatever Xbox calls their next console because they have issues naming their consoles. But after the next gen, everything is going to be in the cloud. It's going to be all cloud, cloud gaming. I think well, the internet will be good enough. Bro, right now, it's going to be just like Netflix. The same way we have Netflix services is what we're having, we're going to have for gaming. I think Microsoft is ahead of, and not just Microsoft. People see the writing, the companies see the writing on the wall. xCloud, PlayStation Now, Google Stadia, Walmart, Amazon supposed to have streaming services. It's not only a matter of time before Nintendo either has their own streaming services or put, puts their games. I don't think Nintendo's ever going to put their games on somebody else's streaming services. So Nintendo's going to have their own streaming service. And we're just going to be a la carte, stream our games as we go. 
Um, that's that's where I think the gaming industry is going. It's just a matter of time. Um, and so is Stadia. This article saying that um, cloud. It didn't say Stadia specifically, but it said cloud gaming will be the death of console gaming. And I agree. It's just a matter of if. Um, it's just a matter of when, not if. Because it's going to happen. All right, dudes. What do you guys think about everything we discussed in this video? Sound off in the comment section below. I want to know. But before you go, bro, click that subscribe button. Stay up to date. All things gaming. Yo, we out. B -b 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 Boy. Uh -huh.